Hello Insomnia, it's Elsie. Welcome to my channel. If you are new and if you are returning, welcome back. Friends, I survived. I made it through to the other side and lived to see another day. After attending the Dreamcatcher concert in Toronto on September 5th, the year of our Lord, 2023. So I'm very excited today to share my concert experience with all of you. It was absolutely fantastic as you can imagine, as well as share some tips that I learned along the way for those of you attending the Nashville concert today or the concert in Orlando. But before we get into the video, please don't forget to give this video a like if you enjoy it and subscribe to my channel. So as you may know, it was a very short turnaround time from when the concert was announced versus when the tickets actually went on sale. It was just a couple of days. So to get the tickets for the concert, it was kind of a scramble with my friends. We arranged the call to buy tickets right when they went on sale and we looked for the best set of three that we could find, which was right in the front middle section. It was Orchestra 4 of Meridian Hall in row JJ, which was the 10th row from the stage. Yes, thankfully this concert was seated and then later it was announced by my music taste that there would be a VIP package type of add-on to the concert ticket where you could get access to the soundtrack, where you could get exclusive merch, access to the venue and the merch line first, and then a high touch experience after the concert. The price was a little steep. It was 169 US dollars, which works out to about 230 Canadian dollars, but I honestly think it was worth it. And hopefully it will be clear to you by the end of this, why that's the case. Hopefully it's not too late for those in Orlando if you haven't picked yours up yet. So of course, after acquiring the tickets, after getting my light stick, after getting my VIP package, of course, I had to figure out the perfect fit. And when in doubt for what to wear to a concert, just dress up as your bias in the music video for your favorite song. And my favorite song, of course, from Dreamcatcher is Scream. So for my concert outfit, I found a white dress at a thrift store, but then bought the white leather harness and the boots that I'm wearing in the photo on Shein. Sorry, I I hate shopping fast fashion, but I promise I will be re-wearing these in different concerts and at different K-pop type things in the future. Just wanted to put that out there <laughs> for anyone who's disappointed in me in shopping at Shein. I swear it was a last resort. And then I wanted to make the mask that Gahyun has in the music video. So I got the plastic mask, some lace to cover the mask, some fabric glue and some rhinestones. And I was shocked that the rhinestones were by far the most expensive part of the mask. So this is what the final product looked like. It took forever. It probably took me maybe like five or six hours to make this because I couldn't find a white mask. I literally went to multiple party cities and could not find a white mask. So I had to buy a gold one. So I had to do many layers of the lace in order for the gold to be somewhat hidden. Probably cost me about $30 Canadian to make this with about half of that <laughs> just for the rhinestones. Probably could have saved money if I looked things up on Amazon. But again, I like to shop at local stores and try to avoid shopping on Amazon whenever possible. So if you wanted to recreate something similar, then you could probably do it for cheaper. What do you think? <laughs> so again, here was the final look of me at Meridian Hall, and then here was the look with the mask. All right, so for everything leading up to the concert, the day of the event, I unfortunately did not really get much footage for any of this, mostly because I couldn't film anything. We weren't permitted once we got inside the venue. And then of course, I feel a little bit odd about filming people without their consent. I've kind of changed my opinion on this since I filmed my last concert vlog for ATs in December. So I'm going to use some of my concert footage that I filmed here as a backdrop to my discussion about this part of the day. So the day of the concert, I was hella stressed out and I had to work pretty much right up until the sound check check-in closed, which was at three o'clock. And I got there at like 2.45, 2.50. I absolutely hauled ass to get to the venue on time. And I was so sweaty by the time 
time I got there because it was like 40 degrees Celsius out that day with the humidity. And I almost even missed the window to check in even though I got there on time because when I arrived, I had asked someone in a line that was wrapping around the building if it was the sound check line and they said yes. So I just got in the line and waited. But then someone had told them that they had to go to the table at the front to get their wristband and then line up. So thank goodness that they told me because I would have been in the line without my wristband and then been in a pickle once 4 p.m. rolled around and I got to the front and didn't have my wristband. So yes, make sure that if you get VIP tickets that you have your wristband and you go to the table to get the wristband before you get in line. So we had to wait outside until they let us in for sound check, which was 3.45 and thank goodness I had enough foresight to throw some sunscreen in my bag because the line was directly in the sun. There was no shade. So to try to keep myself busy, Busy and not absolutely sweat to death. I brought some photo cards with me that I handed out in line while some of the people I met in line who were awesome, by the way, extra special shout out to Doris who I spent most of the rest of the day with. Check her out on Instagram. Her hamster is the cutest. And I was absolutely shocked handing out the photo cards because before the concert, I was thinking, you know, it would be cool if like, one person came to say hi, that would be awesome. Maybe even like two, that would be absolutely crazy. But I swear, there were maybe like 10, 15 people who said hi and who watched my channel just in the sound check line. I was absolutely floored. I could not, I could not believe it. So to everybody that I met in line, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry if I seemed incredibly awkward because I was just like, I was just so caught off guard, but like pleasantly so, don't worry. But it was just like one of those like, what do I do with my hands moments. And it was like, oh no, are they going to be disappointed by real life me compared to video me? Because I was just like sweating profusely and I probably just had like makeup dripping down my face. But yes, every single person that I met at the concert was absolutely lovely. You are so sweet. Thank you so, so much for saying hello. It actually means so much. But yes, back to the concert. They let us in for sound check at about 3.45. They open the doors, let us in, they do a bag check, and the air conditioning in the lobby was absolute god tier. They lined us up in pairs of two to go into the theater to sit for the sound check, and they gave us the spiel about how phones and filming were strictly forbidden. And this is where I learned that in my opinion, showing up last to the sound check was actually a good thing. I actually think it was an advantage to show up last and I'll explain why. First of all, because when we went in, I was in the last row for sound check and by last, it was like the fourth row. We were still super close to the front. And because of that being in the last row, we got to stand up because there's no one behind you. And for some reason, the people in the other rows just stayed seated during the sound check, except for some people in the front row. I don't really know why, but when you're in the last row with so few people, especially when you're standing up and no one else is, you pretty much are the most visible people in the crowd other than the people who are in the very front row. So you pretty much get to interact with every single member that you want to. They all see you. And you know, I'm not really someone who goes out of their way to interact with idols, not because I think there's anything wrong with that, but I just feel like I'd want that experience to go to someone else, if that makes sense, and wouldn't want to take up someone's spot getting to interact with an idol. So every time I made eye contact with one of the members, which was pretty much every single one of them multiple times, we kind of just like looked at each other because <laughs> I didn't really know what else to do. I just kind of like waved and that was pretty much it, except for Ji I swear, Ji was so cute and just like really bringing the energy during the sound check because from what I saw, she was really doing the most in terms of interactions, you know, hyping up the crowd. And at one point when the other members were talking to the crew about mic levels and stuff, because you know, it was a true sound check. Sometimes I feel like K-pop sound checks are just mini concerts. Ji was looking for someone to play rock, paper, scissors with. She was holding up her fist like this and just like, 
no one was biting. I think people just didn't understand what she was trying to do, like doing this. So finally, when I realized no one else was going to do it, I held up my fist too, and she saw me pretty much right away. And then I kind of lifted my fist to do the kaibaibo thing, and she did it too. And then I think at that point, <laughs> once she threw scissors and I threw scissors too, like everyone got the picture but at that point she kind of just started doing the scissors to the rest of the crowd as if acting out that she was beating them all <laughs> with scissors but yes so they sang fairy tale and wonderland for their soundtrack and they just straight up sang fairy tale and you know jumped around a little and then for wonderland they did the full choreography and one of the main thoughts i walked away with after the soundtrack was wow they're small <laughs> i'm not very tall i'm five foot four but most of them were smaller than me they were so petite and then also I thought they looked super pretty wearing pretty much no makeup. Xi'an was showing that off at one point. She pointed to her face and said no makeup and you know she smiled kind of implying that she looked good without makeup. <laughs> so you know jealous. But yeah soundtrack was only like 15 minutes and then they kicked us out of the venue after that and then on the way out of the door gave us our little merch package on the way out. So in addition to the wristband that we got when we checked in, this was what they gave us. So first of all, there was like this circular fan, I think. So you can see the members on the front. Then there was this Dreamcatcher World Tour pouch. But I think these are mostly just stickers. Yeah, there's this kind of like card where maybe you put the stickers on them? I don't know. But we have these four different stickers. Number one, number two, number three, and number four. And then this is what the pouch looks like without anything in it. And then there was a set of photo cards that you received of all seven members. And I actually haven't looked at these yet. I could see the GU one at the front just because obviously it was the <laughs> first one in the package, but let's check out the rest together. So we have GU and then we have Sua, I like the white on her. She looks very elegant and pretty. And then next we have oh, Xi'an, oh my gosh. I love the blonde on her. She looks so elegant. And then next, oh, I love the blonde on Handong too. I don't know, they just like look so ethereal with the blonde I find. Next, oh my gosh, they're all blonde. <laughs> this was kind of like the same hair that Yu Hyun had during the concert. And next, <gasps> oh, this is so cute. Oh my gosh, like this almost doesn't even look like Dami. It took me a se <laughs> it took me a second. I was just like, who is that? It must just be because of the angle. Like it almost looks like she doesn't have a chin. And then last but not least, we have Gahyeon. Oh. <laughs> so I'd be very curious to know if this is the same photo card set as the one that they sell at the merch booth or if they're different. Because the only thing that interested me that I was maybe going to get at the merch booth was the photo card set, but one, I felt like it would be kind of an asshole move <laughs> when you were already getting a photo card set to buy a set at the merch booth because those are the things that tend to sell out really fast and what people want the most. So I was just like, I'm not gonna buy that when I'm already getting a photo card set. But yes, if you know the answer to that, let me know in the comments. But speaking of merch, I would say that if merch is a big priority priority for you, then that's an extra important reason why being last to get in was important because when we were in the last row, when exiting the theater to leave the venue, we were actually the first to leave. So if we wanted to, we could have essentially been the first people in line to get back into the venue to buy merch. So, you know, here I was realizing that by getting there last, I didn't have to wait as long in the heat to get inside. I still got to interact with the members and play rock, paper, scissors with Jiu even being the last last person to get in and then I was able to be in line first to buy merch. But yes, yeah, since Doris and I were some of the last people to enter the venue and so was Lena who came up to us after the sound check and was like, hey, I'm by myself. Can I hang out with you guys? And we were like, sure. We went to get some food and, you know, rehydrate ourselves because we weren't about to wait outside in the heat for almost two more hours. And then at the venue, when we got back, maybe around 530, there were two separate lines to get back in. There was the general line and then the VIP line where they were letting the VIPs in first to buy merch. I'm personally not a huge merch person because one, it's really expensive and two, there was really nothing that stood out to me in terms of what could be bought since 
you know, I already got merch from the package and I have enough t-shirts, enough tote bags, etc. But I'd say if it's really important to you to get a shirt in the size you want, that sort of thing, like you need to get VIP because they pretty much shut down the merch booth once the VIPs got through it. They said they were reopening it after the concert and some of the other people I was with during the concert went to check it out afterwards who didn't have VIP and they said there was only like large extra large left in all the shirts at that point point. and again even though we went to get food and didn't take advantage of what could have been a prime spot in line for merch doris still got a shirt in the size that she wanted once we got into the venue and then at that point lena and i just kind of walked around we hung out we chatted with some people including my friend anna who was my seatmate and showed up with her friends later on because they didn't have the vip and then we took our seats the the concert started right at 7.30 and it was the moment of truth. I don't think this needs to be said, especially for those of you who had the pleasure of seeing Dreamcatcher in concert in person, but it was amazing and it helped that they opened with my absolute favorite song which is scream and i apologize to the people who were near me during that i was probably <laughs> i was probably so annoying Then they performed Odd Eye Next, which I didn't film because I was too busy vibing and losing my mind. But after Odd Eye, they introduced themselves and were generally being goofy, etc. <laughs> then after that, they moved on to Curse of the Spider. Yeah! And then Maison, which was awesome. One of my favorite performances of the night. Boca was a highlight as well, honestly. They really front loaded a lot of my favorite UK songs. Then after Boca, they did another little break and did a relay dance of Giu's part from Vision since they weren't performing it. And I swear, it felt like they were all dancing to me because I was in the very middle, like seriously, the very middle seat. Like, doesn't it look like they're just looking at me and performing to my camera? They were absolutely wilding out <laughs> during this part, like had everyone in the building by the throat. Like throat catcher is what they should be called. Then they performed Damien, which again, I didn't film because of vibing. And then after a little VCR break came Propose. <laughs> Break the Wall and Tension, which I didn't film. <laughs>
Next was when they did their dance challenges, which was super cute. And there were so many viral <laughs> moments that have been circulating. I didn't catch all of them on camera, but that moment from Taki Taki of them with their butts in the air. <laughs> Again, I was in the very middle. So I was like eye level with Yoo Hyun's bum, but you know, looking respectfully, I promise. I'm sure there are better clips of the dance challenges out there, but here are some clips from what I got because I only started filming for Shein's dance. Then they started back up with Diamond, Good Night, and then a little VCR. I'm sorry, I completely lagged on filming for those parts because I really was trying to just enjoy the concert as much as I could, but I did get some fly high footage. footage from To You, which was next, along with Fairy Tale. <laughs> after that, performed Wonderland, and then Jazz Bar after that. <laughs> But if you're on Twitter, you probably saw people posting about someone screaming during Gahyan's Ment. <laughs> to anyone who attends future concerts, please don't do this. You know, I completely understand wanting to have interactions with your favorite idols, especially if you can't afford to get front row seats or if you're not lucky enough to get front row seats. Like really, I truly get that and there's nothing wrong with that desire, but being respectful to the idols and everyone around you should always be priority number one. So please, please everyone take that into consideration for your next concert. At that point, they took the group photo where I was staring directly into the camera lens. So I know I'm here somewhere and that I'd be visible if they had brought the lights up, but they didn't. So <laughs> my best guess is that I'm right around here because Lena, who is next to me, had her light -E with her, which obviously stands out. Then after the photo, they performed Bon Voyage. <laughs> And sadly, the concert was over. Or was it? No, it was not because they came out for the encore and performed Can't Get You Out of My Mind and Lena was freaking out because it was one of her favorite songs.
then of course came Silent Night, which I was so excited to see performed live the whole time. I could not wait for the ending part to come up so we could just like <laughs> go absolutely crazy. And the ending came up four times for Silent Night. So one of them I got on film, but most of it, I was just jumping around like a maniac. <laughs> Then the very last song of the night was Reason. They said goodbye but it wasn't really goodbye for the VIP folks because we got to stick around and do the high touch which honestly I cannot tell you <laughs> I cannot tell you much about it it was such a blur again we were not allowed to film but I will put the order that I think the members were in on the screen it was a blur for all three of us but this is what we could put together from what we remembered though we might be wrong but Dami was definitely first and Hong Dong was definitely second because my heart just like absolutely leapt into my mouth when I came around the corner and saw that Dami was first so we came in on the left and they were on the right and she looked so small next to Hong Dong and she was smaller than me she was probably like here on me but it really is as fast of an experience as people tell you it is it was probably from Dami Dami to Gahyan, it was probably maximum like 20, 25 seconds. You maybe had like two to three seconds per member. And because they were on the right, I had my bag and I was holding my mask in my left hand. I don't think that Dami, Handong, or Yuhyun saw my mask, but for basically Sua on, I'd held it closer and it was more obvious. And all four of them pretty much had the exact same <laughs> reaction because they looked at me and smiled and then looked down at my mask and pretty much each one of them were like, ooh, just the like, open mouth emoji. But again, we just got forced to shuffle along. They kept being like, keep it moving, keep it moving. So it was super fast. And that was it, y'all. That was the Dreamcatcher concert in Toronto. While of course the concert was an absolute blast, it was also amazing to meet Doris, to meet Lena, to meet all of you. That part was honestly just as fun. And Samia is just oh, so, so amazing. After doing a couple of these concert vlogs at this point, I always like to do a little bit of a tips section at the end, especially for people who are going to a concert and don't know what to expect. I know when I watch concert vlogs, that's mostly what I'm looking for, is just like how to prepare for the concert I'm about to attend. So as you can probably tell, if you've been watching this video at any point now, my tip number one is VIP is worth the price. And number two, get there at the end of the check-in process if you have assigned seating because again you can avoid the unnecessary waiting outside you can still have plenty of interactions with the idols being at the final row of soundtrack and then finally you can get your first choice at merch when you line back up to get in number three really important tip is prepare for the weather I did this somewhat haphazardly because again showing up at the end of check-in I thought that I wouldn't really have to do any waiting outside but thankfully I just you know very haphazardly packed some sunscreen in my bag, but I didn't pack anything else. I didn't pack a hat, I didn't pack water. The people who were in line around me were thankfully nice enough to keep my spot while I went to buy some and come back. You can even bring one of those like USB fans. I think I've seen one on Amazon that is both a phone charger and a fan, which is like perfect for a concert. If you have to wait outside in the winter, make sure you're wearing mittens, a hat, or if it's raining, bring an umbrella, a jacket. If the venue has a strict bag policy about what you're allowed to bring in, you could always bring some disposable items. So for example, for the AT's concert I went to in December, having those hot hands 
for, was super helpful. You could put them in your pockets and it kept me warm all day. And you know, you can always drop off your stuff in your car or your hotel room if it's nearby, if you can. But if you can't, then you know, disposable things like a poncho, like a disposable poncho if it's raining outside or you know, like just a disposable paper fan for the heat. You catch my drift at this point. Just make sure that taking care of yourself is the number one priority. Tip number four, make friends. Not only will this just make the waiting and the line go way, way faster, but there are people I met and friendships that I absolutely cherish from meeting people in line at concerts. I still talk to some of those people to this day. So don't be a stranger. And if you're awkward like me and need some kind of icebreaker, then giving out freebies is the perfect way to do that. You can print out some photo cards and it's not super expensive. I know for example, there's this website called Photobook where you can print out individual photo cards and I think it costs something like $20 Canadian to print out 30, but you could possibly get a better deal at just like a local print shop. I had a hookup through work <laughs> because of my job. Number five, even if you have seats, wear comfy shoes because no one sat during the concert. <laughs> I'm telling you, pretty much people just sat to rest their knees and their feet during the VCRs, but then everybody stood right back up when they came back out. And most theaters are on an incline. So if you're wearing a shoe with a heel, it's going to force your feet down into your shoe even further. So while the fit is important, <laughs> comfy shoes are even more important, trust me. Number six, make sure that you have at least 10 gigabytes of free storage on your phone and make sure that you bring a portable charger and charging cable for your phone. You don't want your battery to die during the concert or for your phone to run out of storage. I cannot tell you how many people I've seen at concerts that this has happened to, so be prepared. Number seven, have a plan for after the concert. Don't just go home by yourself immediately right after the concert. Make some plans with friends, just like debrief with the people around you. I'm sure there'll be people hovering around the venue after the concert. Just like go say hi to people, go get a beverage together or something. Just make sure that you're not by yourself immediately after the concert because I guarantee you, the PCD, the post-concert depression will be so much worse if you do. Number eight, super, super important one and my final tip, be kind to the idols and to the fandom. Think about the golden rule. If I were Dreamcatcher, how would I want to be treated when I'm on stage? How would I want the fans to act? If I could design the perfect audience of people around me for the concert, what would they do? What would they be like? There's nothing wrong with screaming during the concert at the right times or holding your phone up to film or holding up a sign for a brief moment. But again, just please, please be mindful of the people around you. And if you're unsure if what you're doing is okay, just like ask, just ask the people around you. I'm sure they'll really appreciate the fact that you're just asking. Or if, for example, you're someone who likes to scream a lot and scream all of the lyrics to every song just like go to the person next to you and be like hey just so you know this is what I like to do during concerts I love to scream along to the lyrics but if it's going to bother you or if it does bother you at any point just let me know like just tap me on the shoulder and I'll stop again I know you want to have the best concert experience possible but you can still do that while being respectful to everybody so that is it that is my vlog for the concert those are my tips I hope that you enjoyed either reliving the concert experience with me if you attended or enjoyed living vicariously through me if you're not able to make it to a concert this time or I hope that I was able to help if you're going to be attending a Dreamcatcher concert in the near future. But until my next video, I hope that you are doing well, staying safe, taking care of yourself. I wish all of you the most Dreamcatcher concert ticket, and I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day.